Finally, in June of 1919, they signed the Treaty of Versailles, and it did provide for a League of Nations. But back home in the United States, Woodrow faced a fight in the U.S. Senate. The Senate did not want to ratify the treaty with the League of Nations. They were very jealous of the constitutional prerogative to declare war, and they were afraid that the League of Nations would oblige them to go to war when they didn't want to. They wanted amendments known as reservations that would spell out exactly what the rights and responsibilities of America were under this new system. Woodrow didn't agree. He wanted the treaty that he had negotiated accepted as it was written. So he decided to appeal to the American people. In those days, of course, he couldn't just go on television. He couldn't even go on the radio. He had to make a transcontinental train trip. They left in September of 1919. It was extremely hot. Of course, the metal cars of the railroad were not air conditioned. They set a grueling pace. They got all the way out to California and turned back. But as the train wound up through the Rocky Mountains, the altitude began to tell on Woodrow's blood pressure. In Pueblo, Colorado, he collapsed. The train sped back to Washington, but it was already too late. A few days after he got to Washington, on October 2nd, Woodrow Wilson suffered a massive stroke. Edith came into the bedroom to find him slumped to the floor. One side was paralyzed. He could hardly speak, and no one knew what his mental faculties were like. As president, he was completely incapacitated. At this point, only a very few people knew of Woodrow's true condition. Edith made a fateful decision to keep her husband in office. Later, she claimed that his doctors had told her it would be good for Woodrow to stay in office. This seems unlikely, but in any case, that is how she chose to interpret their recommendations. She certainly knew that that was what Woodrow would have wanted. He was not and never had been a quitter. She instructed his doctors and the White House staff to keep Woodrow's condition secret from the American people. She knew that if his condition were known, his opponents would force him from office. She also suspected that Woodrow Wilson's vice president, Thomas Marshall, would not fight for the League of Nations as Woodrow had. The next 17 months, the remainder of Woodrow's term, Edith later characterized as her stewardship. That is the period during which she is said to have been the first woman president. Her contemporaries called her the acting president, Madam President, Mrs. President Wilson, and to a great extent, they were right. 